I had the most difficult time with losing my hair. Losing my breast, I could cover up. Nobody was the wiser. But when you're walking around bald, people can identify that there's something wrong with you. In our society, we want to change our look, we change our hair. We cut it, we grow it, we color it. But when you don't have that option, and not only is your hair gone, your eyebrows are gone, your eyelashes are gone, your arm hair is gone, everything about it is just very traumatic. I, I made every excuse in the world not to go to the, to the stores or anything. I kept telling everybody I'm afraid I'm going to pick something up, you know, viruses or something like that because I just felt so uncomfortable um, being so exposed. I, I can remember walking through the door and this young woman just started laughing and I knew she was laughing at me and she would look in my direction and I just was, it was so unnerving. It felt it, very intimidating. And then as you walk around the store, you, you notice people looking at you. Going out in public was always a hard thing for me after the cancer diagnosis. And as I finished my treatments and I started to feel like I looked better, it was a little easier for me to go out in public, but I still had to have a family member with me in order for me to feel at ease. If I would turn to go down an aisle in the grocery store and there would be people in there, I would choose an aisle that there was no one on. It's a little dehumanizing the way you feel. One day, about two months after my last radiation treatment, I saw this woman in the cracker aisle. And I'm trying to ignore people staring at me, and I'm just getting my groceries when I come around the corner, and I'm, I think I'm on the chip aisle, and at the other end is a young woman with a cart coming toward me. I could tell that she was trying to camouflage herself into the aisle. And I remembered that feeling. As she was in the aisle, she had her hat really low over her eyes. It's kind of like, you see me, but please don't look at me. She was really close to the aisle, so that way if anybody were to walk back and forth, that they wouldn't bump into her or have to say excuse me to her. So she was trying to be incognito, kind of like the movie stars when they go out in public. And she's got this huge grin on her face, and she's looking directly at me and um, she just keeps coming toward me. Because I remember being that person, having everybody stare at you and looking at you funny or just feeling like everybody was staring at you because you were so self-conscious about yourself. And she's like, hey, sister, and then just starts speaking to me about her own experience with breast cancer. With a big old smile on my face, and I just wanted to run up to her and just grab her and let her know that everything was going to be okay. Her hair was short and curly at the time, so I could tell that she was just growing her hair out, and I was really excited asking her questions about how long did it take to get your hair that long, <laughs> you know. Every woman going through chemotherapy, the hardest thing to do is to lose your hair. Your hair can grow back, but it takes so long. It touched my husband profoundly. And he kind of looked at me like, what are you going to say to my wife? You look at breast cancer patients and everybody has compassion for them and then you forget the families that, that love them, that just really struggle watching you go through these things. And he just is so protective of me. So I walked over and I said, hi, I introduced myself and I just told her to stay strong and that I knew where she was, but to look at me and to know that there was going to be a brighter future and that she was going to make it through it because if I could make it through it, anybody could make it through it. And then to have this young, beautiful woman just encourage me and let me know that she'd already been through everything I was currently going through and that she was going to be, that it would all be okay. And we had a great conversation and I gave her a really big hug and I hugged her husband and it really made me feel good that I could give back to a woman that was in my position and understand where she was coming from and I could see that there was a light in her eye again. Her story touched me profoundly and I feel grateful that anybody would care enough to just stop and make sure that they're ministering to another person going through what they're going through. I think it's the greatest gift you can give. I couldn't let her disappear because I knew what it was like to feel that way and to let her know that she was just as beautiful as she was before and she should let her light shine and not be discouraged by the way that she looked because she was a warrior and warriors have to go through a battle. 
I had never met this young woman before and she just was so charismatic and so compassionate and um, really just set me so at ease. Coming from a woman or a person who's actually been through the process and knows exactly what your inner deep feelings are that you'll never share with anybody. It, it touched more than me, you know, and it was so beautiful because it made me feel very special at that moment, standing in that aisle with this woman. I thought, man, I couldn't be in better company. And she hugged me and she encouraged me. And, and I, I have, you know, you, it's one of those things you just don't forget. And I felt like maybe, just maybe, I made a difference. By the time we got done at the end of the aisle, I had a whole different attitude than I had leading up to that. She made me proud to be sporting my ball cap and my bald head because, I mean, there I was looking at this woman, 20 years my junior, who had um, everything on the line, and she just set me at ease. She just made me feel like, you know, I, I'm doing this, you can do this, you know, we got this. I walked away, and I just felt so wonderful inside. I felt like I changed, not only did I change personally by growing and talking to a complete stranger about some very personal issues, but I could tell that I affected her and her husband and I changed her perspective. After I walked away from her, she wasn't camouflaged anymore. She wasn't going and trying to hide in the aisle. She had a huge smile on her face and she looked joyful in the eyes, like, okay, I think this is gonna be okay. I can do this. Age does not separate you. It actually um, even enhances the experience because I can um, be comforted by a 30-something and, um, and feel like she's got as much wisdom as any woman of any age does because of the experiences she's had as well. My husband and I spoke of her often because he would just go, I will never forget. But I always look for her and since then I have not run into her in the store. But due to the sisterhood of a program like Women Supporting Women, I walked into the office one day to volunteer, and lo and behold, who walks in to help? <laughs> and here we are, <laughs> my dear friend. <laughs> Women Supporting Women not only helped us at the beginning of our journey, but it helped us reconnect after which really speaks to the organization and what it does beyond cancer.